don't sink. Because you can see, we're like, we're coming right onto the, the glide slope, like, fine. And they're like, don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. It's so stupid. All right, we're getting some wind shear alerts here. As you can see down here, uh, it's definitely storming around here. Let's adjust our tilt uh, like so. And look to see what's down below us because you can't really see too much ahead of us. Looks like we got a little bit of precipitation in front of us. Not really, it's hard to tell what it's what, it's what and what's gonna be turbulence, but just looking out the window, I mean, I can tell you right now, it's gonna be, it might be a little rough. Hard to say. We're flying a little further to the, a little more su southwesterly to, to pick up this radial uh, for the inbound radial to the Walnut Ridge VOR. So we kind of flew a little bit out of the uh, scope of things, but we'll get back on track. Make a left turn to intercept that uh, final radial here, uh, which is 188 radial inbound course to the Walnut Ridge VOR. And we're 32 miles from it, well, 31 now. Uh, you can see a discrepancy between digital DME and uh, the old analog style, uh, but it's still all the same. Looks like the skies have cleared up quite a bit down there in front of us. So that's a little helpful for uh, knowing what might lie ahead uh, with weather in uh, Memphis. We're going to check the weather in Memphis here in a little bit. I uh, just want to make sure we get to the VOR perfectly fine, which we're doing doing well on right now. So one more little click of the heading or two, and we're right on course. All righty, getting uh, weather here in Memphis right now. As you're going to see this needle on the HSI start to move to the right. That's because as we get closer to the VOR, it gets a lot more sensitive. So it's not that we're flying the wrong course or anything. Uh, we're just uh, getting close to the VOR. And once you do that, um, you no longer have to fly that. You're gonna wait for that. Uh, there's a little, um, as you see on the front of this airplane, little piece here, you've got this little white triangle. Once it flips, it means that we have crossed over the VOR and we're on an outbound radial of it then. So we'll use that outbound radial to get to the dog intersection. Um, as well as looking at what I was saying before, Memphis uh, weather looking about uh, winds are two, three, zero, eight knots. So out of the west at eight knots, um, wind uh, looks like the visibility is about 10 to two miles of visibility. A few clouds of 5,500 scattered, 25,000, which we're seeing uh, currently right now as um, we fly in here. Uh, altimeter is about three, zero, zero, zero. So high pressure, not bad. Um, not seeing any thunderstorms in the area or anything like that. Uh, but that could change uh, as we get closer. You never know. So we're just waiting for the flip of the switch here. Once we get the old flip, we'll be fine. I'm just going to try to no, wind shear ahead. That's what those lights keep telling us, um, which is usually not a, it's not a good thing. Trust me. Da, 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 da. All right. So the dog intersection showing we're going to cross Walnut Ridge waiting for the flip. Once we get the flip of the switch, we will fly heading 164. So we're just waiting to cross over Walnut Ridge now. We're six miles from the VOR, and we are hitting some rain, that is for sure. It's precipitation. That's a contrail of an airplane that flew right in front of us back, back there. Still waiting for that flip. We can have a look at the weather radar again. Let's get this tilt kind of centered here, and let's bring the range back out to 80. Let's keep an eye on our VOR. There's the flip of the VOR, so let's go to a heading of 164 so heading 164 sorry wrong way <laughs> and i'll just go ahead and turn the course just to make sure that we're on a perfect heading and course there we go so 164 now as we are we have crossed over the walnut uh, ridge vor and we're going to go to stanny so 13 miles to stanny intersection and then 27 more miles past that so 40 total to get to dog intersection and at 40 we have to be perfect we'll make our turn to 111 degrees and we'll intercept that inbound uh, radial to the gilmore vor and again i keep calling the walnut ridge a vor it's a vortac i can you can see it on the chart as labeled as such so for you weather you aviation guys 
I know the difference between a Vortac and a VR. I'm just kind of just saying it to them. It's all the same thing. It does the same thing. So there you have it. All right, I'm gonna bank the airplane a little more to the right and we're gonna intercept this outbound radial of 164. Uh, I was hoping we would be right on it as we crossed it over, but we're a little to the left of it. So I wanna make sure we're perfect. Oop, don't wanna click that. So make a little more drastic of a turn here. So we can intercept this nice and uh, easy and quick. Because we don't have a whole hell of a lot to travel, you know, only six, uh, 40 miles total to dog intersection. To dog. There's that needle moving. That's what we like to see. Turn back over to 164 now and proceed on course for Zumo navigation. All right, we're getting closer to the dog intersection. I want to cross over near the uh, Fincher, uh, is the, what the name of that intersection is, at about uh, landing north, about 16,000 feet or so. So let's go ahead and go with 16,000 feet. So we can go ahead and uh, pull back our power a little bit here. Like so, disengage the altitude hold switch and bump it down a few times, about three times. And we start our descent into Memphis. This will be our initial descent into Memphis. And we're getting close to dog intersection here at about uh, another few miles. Uh, we're at 32, so we just need to make it to 40. So another eight miles or so. Uh, we got to, da, 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 da. they want dog intersection at 280 knots, so we can do that. We'll just pull back our power like so. And get her down to 280 knots. And we want a little heavier descent than this. So let's go ahead and pop that sucker down a few more. Let's get about a descent around 2,000, maybe 2,000. Yeah, there we go. About 2,000 uh, feet per minute there. Looks good to me. Just wait for that uh, 40 miles, which we're almost to now. And we're gonna make that turn to 111 on the heading and course. So let's go and flip the course over to 111. Waiting for that 40 right perfect. So here comes 40. And we start now, there's 40 DME. Left turn over to 111 on the heading. For 250 knots, we can increase the power a little bit. We only have to have 280 to it. We're in the soup and some crappy weather now, aren't we? That's all right, I'm used to it. Used to it. Uh, we can go over to the Gilmore VR now, 113 on that guy, 113. So let's go 113. And we'll use, yeah, we'll use that VOR. So we need to go left to intercept it. Let's get heading uh, zero 09 or zero for now. So the winds are out of the west. We'll probably be landing on runway 27 in uh, in Memphis, I would imagine. So let's just continue our way down to uh, the Gilmore VOR, which Fincher is going to be at six miles. So it's, yeah, about six miles or so from it. So we're doing fine for now. We're just gonna intercept this heading of 111 inbound course to the Gilmore VOR and monitor our descent. Let's we'll hold about 250. I'm happy with that. It gives us more time to plan everything we need to plan. And I think our final approach course altitude will be about 2000 feet. We'll just dial in 2000 for now uh, for the altitude alerter. This doesn't control anything but just an alert for us. Hitting some rough stuff on the way down. Uh, 10, 9, 8. And if you're wondering how the cockpit's moving around like that, that's Easy Dock software. That's the Easy Dock camera. Amazing um, add on. You can get it just flight. Or sorry, flight. I think it's flight one. Yeah, flight one sells it. Oh, shit. Wasn't paying attention. Past our freaking radial. No, 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 no. The heading is being stupid now. See, that's what happens. You start talking and you're not flying the freaking plane, Jeff. Let's get back into it. 
We're four miles from the VOR, too. That doesn't help. We're still to it. That's a good sign. We haven't crossed over it yet. But once we cross over it, we're going to make a heading of 128 to Jesty. So let's be prepared for that already. Let's just go ahead and... I know we're in the this general vicinity of it. As long as this doesn't start counting up, we're fine. I think we caught it just in time. Still holding four miles. That's not a good sign. Come on. Countdown, you piece of shit. No, not five miles. Okay, no, okay, we're, 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 we crossed over it now. So, one, two, uh, heading to one, two, eight now. So, we'll go total of 12, 12 miles to Bowen. This is going to be, uh, from the Gilmore VOR, so that'll help us. We're about 15 or so, actually. It's a good, like, 5, 5, 20 total, it's like. Well, what the hell am I saying? All right, still in our descent. We crossed over the Gilmore VOR, and we are on a heading to 128 to Jesty. We already crossed Jesty at 5. Uh, then we got another 5 miles, uh, which would be 10 to Beert, and then 20 miles to Lunar, and then another four miles. So 24 miles total from Gilmore will bring us to Bowen on a heading of 128. So 24, we have five, it's 10, 24, yeah, 24 miles. Our slick getting banged around as we head down into uh, Memphis. We're at about uh, 17 miles now, so we'll wait for that 24, and then we'll make our right turn to heading 180. And I think we're gonna try to we're gonna wait to try to hear from A to see what runways are using, and then we'll decide on where it's runway from there. I think that's the best way. But other than that, we've pretty much finished the star once we hit uh, hit the final uh, the final intersection. Yeah, I know, phone. My battery's getting low. I was using it as my approach plates. That never helps, right? All right, so it's going to take the airplane a little bit to turn, so we're going to go ahead and make that turn to 180 now. Just like so. And we need to get set up for what uh, ILS runway we're going to be using. Let's keep an eye on our speed. About 200 will be happy for now. Still coming down in altitude. I'm very happy with it. Off on our left, there is the airport. That is Memphis. As we continue flying this uh, dog to arrival and descending, 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 still. All right, so we're bringing up the ILS runway 27 uh, chart here. As you can see, looks like the final is going to be 1,900 or 100. We're just going to fly on this heading of 180, and we're going to vector around. Uh, kind of, uh, you can see the airport's off to our left there. We're just going to fly around here and descend in where those clouds are over there and uh, intercept the uh, ILS on for runway 27. So we're still on a nice descent, almost to 10,000 feet here where we turn our landing lights on and do all that fun stuff. So let's keep an eye on our speed, which is holding at about 200. We can actually start our turn a little bit now to about a heading of zero, nine or zero. Let's go to zero, nine or zero on that. Oop. Come on, don't be stupid. If you click it and hold it, it just loves to run away on you. So it looks like our uh, approach course would be 271 and 108.7. So 108.7 here. Let's do that. 108. Still got the airport in sight right there on our left. Still continuing our descent. Here's 5,000 feet. We're going to go down to about uh, 3,000. Well, 1,900 is what's going to be. So about 3,000 initially. Uh, they want us out at uh, that guy for the initial threads at about 1,900. So we'll get down to about 1,900. 
we'll make this a little steeper than normal. Actually, we can go ahead and uh, pitch up our airplane a few times here. We don't need that heavy of a descent now uh, as we uh, got, have the runway in the airport in sight. So we could do a visual approach to it, actually, if we wanted to. Let's just continue flying this way a little bit more. We're just kind of doing a, a left downwind far away from runway 27. So let's go ahead and start our turn to heading 360. Like you so. I stopped you, you piece of shit. There we go. Let's go flaps uh, flaps one now. There's one 1,900 and altitude hold. All right, we're about 1,800 feet, and I've got the runway in sight, so we can actually do a visual approach. We don't have to worry about the ILS. I thought we might be in the soup, so we would have had to fly a little further. I was right, so autopilot off. And the next setting that gear down, please. And let's just do a visual approach to the runway. I know it's a little, it seems like it's a little short, but uh, a 727 is really good at these things. Um, it can totally uh, surprise you as far as what it, what it's capable of doing. Uh, basically they always, the, the, the running joke is that if you can see the runway, you can land on it. A little more power. I don't know what the winds are kind of shifting around on us there. Oh yeah, this is this default Microsoft don't seek bullshit drives me up the damn wall. Don't seek. Because you can see we're like we're coming right onto the the glide slope like fine, and they're like don't sink, don't sink, don't sink. It's so stupid. It doesn't matter how perfectly that we're above the glide slope. Don't sink. Yeah, VSI is like not even that bad. Shut the hell up. A little high, so we need to come down a little bit more. My God, the frames are just killing me because I'm recording. Don't sink. So let's just keep an eye Don't on sink. that. We're on the glide slope now. A Don't little sink. low. Let's bring that nose up. Don't sink. Pulling about 138, Don't sink. 140 for the V-Ref. A little bit higher, Jeff. Don't sink. Shut the fuck Don't up sink. with that. Don't sink bullshit. Don't sink. See, in my old ones, I, I took sink. all that shit out. Don't sink. That's the FedEx facility on our right Don't up sink. there. There's no airplanes there because, again, I don't have any of that World of AI don't shit. Sink. My God, the winds are bad don't here. Sink. Shut the fuck don't up sink. with don't sink. Don't sink. God, that is annoying. Don't sink. Stupid. Don't sink. Grab into the wind here. Winds don't are sink. in uh, that 260 area. Don't sink. I remember them don't saying. Sink. There we go. Up, don't sink. Up on, up on that glide slope. Don't sink. Up onto the glide don't slope. Sink. Like so. Don't sink. And just let her settle. Let her don't settle. Sink. Nose up, bring up that power, little right rudder, and nice touchdown. Fly the runway down, so kill the engines. Spoilers are out. Reverse thrust. And control that sucker all the way down. There's 60 knots, reversers are cleared. And we can clear the runway. Man, that was some wins we were fighting there on final, wasn't it? And that, and that, it just annoys you that don't sink, don't. It, that's a default FSX thing that I've always removed, and I moved to a new PC, so I have not done that yet. So there you have it. Yeah, we'll turn off here, and we'll taxi to the ramp. We will taxi to the ramp, which is where like UPS parks. Oh my heavens! This frame rate is so freaking terrible. What the fuck? Captain Sim, it, it's just so bad in this plane. Let's make the left turn here. Let's bring our flat or not flaps, but yeah, let's bring our flaps up as well as our spoilers. 
This frame rate is just garbage. It pisses me off, I swear. Can't catch a break with that. It's only this airplane, too. It's just the worst frames. And this is the blueprint scenery. It's probably not optimized for FSX too well. I mean, like, it is, but I've had this thing for ages. It's the only Memphis scenery. So when it came out, it's like, oh, of course I got to get that. It's the only one there is. So I don't know why anybody hasn't made a Memphis scenery. That's kind of sucky, but let's bring our flaps all the way up, which they are. Lights are out. Once we make the right turn on here, we're going to go ahead and start our APU and get it on bus and ready to go for when we arrive to our stand or gate, whatever you want to call it. Make the right turn here in the rain. Rain, rain, rain. Shit, shit frames in, inside. Outside, you know, we get great frame rates, but it's, it's the VC that's doing it. Those default spray effects always look like it's freaking snowing. All right, let's go ahead and fire up the APU. APU start. There it goes. Turn our landing lights off. Like so. Keep now what we're doing here. We're doing the, the job of three men as one person. Yeah, so I apologize about the frame rates in this VC. It's just, I, I don't know what I got to do to try to get better performance from it, but I just wanted to fly this 727. I love the airplane. It's just a real shame the VC kills frame rates when recording. Uh, maybe one time if I, you know, if eventually down the road when I get an Aver Media Gaming, like, you know, capture card, it'll be better, but... And I've turned down settings for this flight, but it doesn't seem to make a lick of a difference. So there you have it. Here's what you don't see every day. A UPS DC-8, they retired that fleet. They retired it. I'm going to park right here at this gate. All right, let's make sure the AP's on bus first. Let's go ahead and close that. Trip it. Oh, here we go with this again. Sometimes you gotta close it and then run off the thing with it. Yeah, totes. I know. Cooling doors open. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening here, but okay. These all got screwed up. Uh, essential power APU. APU. Um, okay, why are you guys... Let's trip these guys. Why are they... Uh, they're screwed up. This plane has so many bugs, I just don't get it. I don't. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, everybody else is happy there. We had plenty of fuel for this trip. Let's go ahead and kill these engines. This is getting outrageous. Kill the engines here. Like so. And we can go ahead and flip our beacon light off. Alrighty, guys, so there you have it. Uh, that was a nice little flight down to Memphis. Uh, again, you know, the frame rate would, didn't help us out. Let's go ahead and turn that sucker off. We don't need that on anymore. Um, you know, it just sucks that the, the frame rates are so bad in this VC uh, with, you know, with weather and everything uh, in, in these kind of uh, scenery. So I, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's this airplane. The other ones don't do it too bad. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed the flight. Um, Let's go ahead and just hop over here to the flight engineer seat like so, or the APU panel. Let's open uh, the door here like show, and let's go out and watch, watch the loading of the plane. Ooh. There we go. Let's stand up actually, like so. <laughs> and uh, we can view the backside here of the plane. And there's the K loader. 
and this is the can so you've seen like on my twitter page like this is like the kind of loading we do you got the cans and all the positions in the plane and here's the k loader here like so so there's position three which is in the wrong spot it's supposed to be here in the door but there you guys have it we're in memphis we made it in one piece they're gonna load the, unload the cargo and uh and i'll see you guys next time